Shalom, all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Raka Kwadash, which is the true name of the Heavenly Father, in the name of His Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit, in the ancient Hebrew. Double honor to my elders, the apostles of Great Millstone. Honors and blessings to you, brothers, teaching the word of Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai in true faith and sincerity throughout the four corners of the earth. And as always, peace and mercy to the elect of Israel. My name is Yawanathan. And um, in this lesson, I'm going to be reading this article from ZeroHedge.com, as you can see on the screen. And I'll put the link to this article in the description box as well. For the most part, I'm just going to read um, the headline, which says 28 signs of economic doom as pivotal month of September begins. This article was published on Tuesday, September 3rd, 2019, the year of Karagma. All right. And they pretty much are just going into the details on how wrecked, you know, the U.S. economy really is, man. And how we're pretty much, you know, we are in a recession already. We're heading into a great depression, the greatest depression in history. All right. A global economic collapse. And, um, you know, it's prophesied in the Bible. Let me just bring this up real quick in Jeremiah chapter 51, because America is Babylon. And this place has had its run as a nation, as a kingdom. It's had its time to rule. Who's ruling over Babylon the Great? This this mystery Babylon that the scripture prophesied about, which is America. The Edomites, the so-called white men, starting with the central bankers that pretty much are the tribe of Amalek that rule everything. All right. They don't only have rights, you know, or, or uh, power over America, but they have power over the entire entire globe. It, it, they have power over all the nation's economy and what they're pretty much ready to do now. You know, they're the ones that set up the IMF. They're the ones that set up central banks and printed paper money and, and did the things that's going to lead to this uh this collapse. You know, they're the ones that built this house of cards and now they're ready to um to take it down. But it's ultimately by the will of the Lord because it's prophesied. This is Jeremiah 51 and 8. Babylon is suddenly fallen and destroyed. How for her take balm for her pain? If so be, she may be healed. So this place has a grievous wound in the form of an economic woe. You know, this article goes into some of the things like the trade war. That's really damaging and further inflicting damage on the U.S. economy. The tariffs and um, the interest rates. Things like that, man. The, the massive amount of debt that America's in, 22 trillion and counting. All right. This is how Babylon is suddenly fallen and destroyed. All right. It hasn't physically fallen yet. But um, on many levels, this place is already out of here. This place is already destroyed. All right. And there's no bomb or ointment that you can or, or pretty much there's no remedy for the destruction of this place, man. America is going to be hit with 200 million nuclear missiles. All right. Once this trade war gets hot and leads to that third world war. All right. The, the war of Armageddon. America is the one that's going to suffer the most being destroyed by nuclear missiles. 200 million. And to never be risen up again, to never be built up ever again. This place is going to be a big desert. According to prophecy, it says we would have healed Babylon, but she is not healed. And that was the point that I wanted to bring out. So let's get into some of this article quickly. It says, since the end of the last recession, the outlook for the U.S. economy has never been as dire as it is right now. Everywhere you look, economic red flags are popping up and the mainstream media is suddenly full of stories about, quote unquote, the coming recession, because there is a hype that's being pushed around it. All right. Around around this recession that we may or may not already be in, depending on what perspective or angle you look at it. All right. This um, this is just a hype around it in the media, because pretty much what the elites want to do is crash this economy and um, bring in that chip, you know, bring in that RFID microchip implant. So they scaring people on the news, on the mainstream media. You know, they, they pretty much put in fear into people that there's going to be major tariffs, which this is all true. Nonetheless, but they're the ones that are pushing this um, on the media to scare people into what? You know, looking for a new solution, looking for something new that, that can um, 
pretty much fix this shit or or new system, which is basically going to be that mark of the beast, that RFID microchip implant. That's going to be the new economy because it's prophesied in Revelation 13 and 16 on down. All right. That RFID chip is going to be made mandatory. And if you don't take it, you won't be able to buy and sell. All right. This is the truth. This is what is going on, man. The, the elites are ready to, to pretty much do away with the dollar, do away with all cash and create this new world order, which is already here. All right. And it's not really anything new, but in the, in the face of, you know, digital uh um how could how could i say it the internet of things and you know with the guise of of things like that internet of things smart cities and stuff like that this is like something new you know but really all the technology all the um all the the building blocks is already here man you you could already pay for the train for the subway with your phone over here in new york city there's certain restaurants that don't take cash the dollar is pretty much one of the weakest economies um, in the world right now. So, you know, the stage is already set. That's the point. It says after several years, the relative economic stability, things appear to be changing dramatically for the U.S. economy and the global economy as a whole. Over and over again, we are seeing things happen that we have not witnessed since the last recession, which he's talking about in 2009. And many analysts expect our troubles to accelerate as we head into the final months of 2019, which is the year that we're in. All right. So it says the following are 28 signs of economic doom as the pivotal month of September begins. One, the U.S. and China just slap painful new tariffs on one another, thus escalating the trade war into to an entirely new level. And those trade wars, those tariffs that Trump, you know, DJ Trump, you know, he's very prideful in this whole trade war thing, man. He pretty much made a statement. I watched a video this morning on the Young Turks on YouTube which is an alternate news media outlet. And they said they pretty much brought out how Trump said that he's willing to crash the U.S. economy just to make his point with China. All right. So this guy is very prideful. And we could see that, you know, through the spirit, of course, you know, this is just my spiritual opinion, man. This guy had to be set up by the elites to um to crash the economy, man. That got to be his job. You know, Obama came in. Every president has an agenda when they are selected to be presidents by the elites, all right? Because the whole election thing and you people voting, none of that really matters, man. It's by electoral college. So these people are set up before we even know, before they even run it up on campaign to be president, they already was chosen, all right? And they already have a certain task to do. And I believe through the spirit that Donald Trump's goal or his task is to crash the economy, man, in a strategic way, because this guy is supposedly a, a, like an economic guru. This guy wasn't even a political figure until recently, all right? And now he's ruling the country and pretty much that's the number one reason why America right now is, is in an economic, uh, a bad economic state, at least according to this article. Number two, J.P. Morgan Chase is projecting that the trade war will cost the average U.S. household 1000 per year. Yield number three, yield curve inversions have preceded every single U.S. recession since the 1950s. And the fact that it has happened again is one of the big reasons why Wall Street is freaking out so much lately, along with the trade wars and Donald Trump's uh, tweets. Because every time he gets on the Twitter and tweets away, you know, the the uh, the stock markets have a reflection on whatever he says, you know, meaning if he says something positive about the trade war, you will see the stocks go up if you're paying attention. When he says something negative, you see the stocks drop. All right. Then these guys in Wall Street, these guys are playing with, with a lot of money, man. But we know that ultimately the stock market is manipulated anyways, man. This whole thing is just a big sham. It's a big movie. All right. They, they call the earth the, the theater, you know, Theos, you know, the theater of war. And right now we're in the theater, the theater of economic war, economic trade war. It's all being staged, man. Don't don't believe the hype. Don't fall for the tricks, man. This shit is about to be this shit is about to go down. All right. They about ready to just do away with this system. Man. And 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 again, man, you people out there that you don't have no clue what's going on. You don't want to hear the, the um the words of the prophets, which is the words of Yahweh Bashmi Shai, ultimately. You're gonna get caught like a thief in the night, man, when this thing goes down. When the hyperinflation hits and the economy collapses. And they bring in that chip, you're not gonna know what hit you. All right, but we're telling you here 
at Great Millstone and other Hebrew Israelite camps that are teaching the truth, the 100% truth, we're telling you what's about to happen, man, because we are the prophets. Number four, we just witnessed the largest decline in U.S. consumer sentiment in seven years. Number five, mortgage defaults are rising at the fastest pace that we have seen since the last financial crisis. Number six, sales of luxury homes valued at $1.5 million or higher were down 5% during the second quarter of 2019. Number seven, the U.S. manufacturing sector has contracted for the very first time since September 2009. Number eight, the case fright index had been failing, or excuse me, falling for a number of months, according to CNBC. It fell 5.9% in July, following a 5.3% decline in June and 6% drop in May. Number nine, gross private domestic investment in the United States was down 5.5% during the second quarter of 2019. Number 10, crude oil processing at U.S. refiners has fallen by the most that we have seen since the last recession. Number 11, the price of copper often gives us a clear indication of where the economy is heading and is now down 13% over the last six months. So you see a lot of these um, repercussions and a lot of these things that's happening is just consequences of a trade war. Because Donald Trump did put tariffs on copper, aluminum, steel, iron, you know, all these precious metals or not really precious metals, but these valuable or necessary metals that you need to have a civilization. You know, a lot of technology is ran by copper and iron, you know, gold, silver. They don't just use it as a currency, but it's also used as a, you know, for the infrastructure. So if that's down, then you know something is wrong, man. It's just a lot of these signs. You know, I didn't even get a chance to really read every single last one of these things. I probably even won't. But it's just to make the point that, um, you know, you can read this article mainly for yourself and see. Look, number 14, we just learned that Sears and Kmart will close nearly 100 additional stores by the end of this year. Look at all these signs, man. Number 13, women's clothing retailer Forever 21 is reportedly close, close to filing for bankruptcy protection. OK, these are all the signs that the economy is just shot, man, this is not coming back. And we are already in a recession. It just hasn't fully hit. All right. What we're heading into really is a great depression, man. And now I'm going to get a few scriptures on it. That's probably all I'll read on the article there. Um, you know, I'm on this, you know, running on short time right now. But this is uh, Zephaniah chapter one, verse 17. I'll just get straight to the point. And I will bring distress upon men that they shall walk like blind men. This is talking about the day of the Lord that's coming. All right, the day of the Lord, which is global economic collapse, world war. You know, the, the Lord actually himself coming back with the chariots, which people call UFOs. These are the things that's about to take place on earth. These are the sequence of events, man. Uh, martial law, race riots, civil unrest. All right, this is all leading up to the day of the Lord, man. The time of Jacob's trouble. It says they shall walk like blind men, meaning they're not going to know what's going on. All right. Not literally blind men, but figuratively, meaning you can't see what's going on around you. It's going to be famine. All right. It's going to be uh, uh, animals uh, being released from zoos. And it's just going to be all out chaos, man. Whatever you, the worst you can think of is going to be a reality. All right. And for the majority of the men on this planet, that's outside of the elect men of Israel. You're going to be pretty much bugged out in that day, man. You're not going to have no stability, no protection. All right. You're just going to get caught out there, man. Why? It says because they have sinned against the Lord and their blood shall be poured out as dust and their flesh as the dung. So there's a time of great death that's coming upon the world, man. Not only here in America, but other parts of the planet Earth, too. All right. Great death, man. Dust being, I mean, excuse me, blood being poured out as dust is, is giving you a metaphoric equivalence of how much bloodshed is going to be. All right. That, that the blood is going to be poured out as dust would be. You see what I'm saying? And flesh as dung. Flesh is going to be like shit upon the earth because there's going to be so many dead bodies. Verse 18. This is the main point. Neither shall their silver nor their gold be able to deliver them in the day of the Lord's wrath. So modern day silver and gold today, they're, you know, the higher ups of these nations that are on the planet Earth, like China, Russia, America, you know, Venezuela, you know, the, the main uh, um, superpowers, you could say, I guess, in the Earth, they still use gold and silver to trade and, and it's still a value to them. But to the average everyday citizen, 
gold and silver is not our how we um how how could I say it? it's not something that we use as commerce. You know, the average citizen in the world, in any country you're in, you're using money. You're using paper money, which has basically no value, little to no value. All right. Basically, it's a fiat currency. So, you know, you could equate the Lord saying that their silver and gold shall not be able to deliver them. You can equate that to dollars as well, because now people don't use silver and gold to barter and to trade. Most people use whatever the economy is in your country. So meaning those economies are not going to be able to save you in the day of the Lord. You're not going to be able to pay off the Lord or ransom the Lord or, or bargain with the Lord. When this destruction comes, you're not going to be able to use money when the economy collapses. All right. You won't be able to walk into a store. And even if you got a million dollars, that's going to be worthless. All right. It says, but the whole land shall be devoured by the fire of his jealousy, for he shall make even a speedy riddance of all them that dwell in the land. And that's what is ultimately going to come to, man. Nuclear war. All right. Nuclear war where, the, where America, the whole landmass of America is going to be completely wiped off the face of the earth, man, speedily. In one hour, the scriptures say in the book of Revelation, the 18th chapter, this great city, the riches, the glory that America had, is all going to come to naught because the nuclear missiles are going to devour everything, man. And that's ultimately the wrath of the Lord. All right, riches profit not in the day of wrath. You're not supposed to put your trust in this man's money, his FRNs and his gold and silver that's cankered by the way, because he got it by wickedness. It doesn't even belong to him in the first place. All right. Because of unrighteous dealings, rich, riches, injuries, oh, excuse me, injuries. Excuse me. Let me quote it again. Sirach 10 and 8. It says, because of unrighteous dealings, injuries and riches got by deceit, the kingdom of heaven is translated from one people to another. We're not looking forward to FRNs, man. That's going to be done away with. We're not looking forward to U.S. dollars or Bitcoin or cryptocurrencies. That's all going to be done away with. Once they bring in the chip and once the Most High destroy the land and, and take, out, take out the rulers of the earth, take out the elites and put them in slavery by the hand of his people Israel, they elect the 144,000 men of Israel, then we're just going to inherit the kingdom. We're going to take all the gold, all the silver and, and the true riches of the planet earth, man. Again, you know, when you go back to the ancient world, that was true riches. Now, in this world, you just have paper money. But you can equate paper money to uh, gold and silver in the ancient world, because that's the same way how people was buying and selling. So I'm going to read one more scripture on this economic collapse, this global economic collapse that's about to happen. All right. And mainly here in America. And I'm Lord willing, you know, I'll close this lesson out. This is Ezekiel 7. Verse 19, they shall cast their silver in the streets and their gold shall be removed. Again, just think about it as far as it being paper money instead of actual gold and silver. Because how many people do you know that are really rich in gold and silver in today's world? All right. Only the higher ups. But when you equate this to a regular everyday person. All right. This is what's going to happen, man. This is biblical prophecy. It says they, their silver and their gold shall not be able to deliver them in the day of the wrath of the Lord. Basically repeating the same thing is said in um, Zephaniah. This is, the, this is talking about the day of the Lord, man. When it's all out martial law, you know, race riots and famines, pestilence or disease outbreaks and all of that. What, is your, what good is your money going to do? Floyd Mayweather, 50 Cent, B, P. Diddy. You know, all these guys that boast in their riches is not going to do them a damn when that day comes, man, again, Proverbs 11 and 4, riches does not profit in the day of wrath. Righteousness delivers from death. All right. And the majority of the nation of Israel, you black, Latinos, Native Americans, you haven't been performing righteousness on the planet Earth. you haven't came back to Yahweh by Shem El Shai. All right. You're denying the mouth of the Lord, which is the prophets. All right. You, you scoffing at the words that we speak and the prophecies that we bring out. You basically don't think this is actually going to happen. But when it does happen, the Lord said, you're going to seek him early and you shall not find him. Read Proverbs, the first chapter, starting about the 20th verse. It says, they shall not satisfy their souls, neither fill their bowels, because it is the stumbling block of their iniquity. Because when an economy collapses, that means you have famine, because how else are you going to buy food and water? You won't be able to. And you're going to try to eat your money and eat your coins and 
but that's not going to do you no good either, man. See, the Lord is bringing a, a scary destruction to this world, something that has never been seen before. Jeremiah 30 and 7 and Daniel 12 and 1. This, this day that's coming has never been the like. All right. And you people think you can store up food and water and get your bug out bags and, and prepare for this global economic collapse. But you can't. All right. The way how the Lord is going to have it is just going to be a complete, utter de um, destruction man, desolation. I don't even know what word to use, man. The words are escaping me at the very you know thought and the vision of what the Lord is actually about to bring to this earth, man. And, on, you know, these articles could only do but so much to show you. How jacked up and, uh, you know, how, how could I say, how much of a bad situation we really are in and how much worse it's about to get, man. The scriptures is what really brings it to life. All right. This money has been the stumbling block of your iniquity, man. The scripture tell you in First Timothy, the sixth chapter, how, you know, many men have pretty much, you know, um, you know, the love of money, excuse me, the love of money is the root of all evil. That's what I was thinking about. First Timothy, the sixth chapter, the love of money is the root of all evil. So look at all the evil that's going on in the earth. These people would do anything for a dollar. But now the dollar is about to collapse. Barakatha Yahweh, Barakatha Yahweh Shai. Hey, man, death to this place, man. Death to the economies of all the nations of the earth, to their armies, to their political structures, their rulership. All right, it's Yahweh, it's Yahweh Shai's time to shine. All right, it's time for the elect of the nation of Israel to get a peace, man. All right, where Yahweh Shai and, and rule over this earth in righteousness forever in the kingdom of heaven. And with that, all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. Brakatai Yahweh, Brakatai Yahweh Shai once again. A double honor to the elders, the apostles of Great Millstone, and Shalom to the elect. I hope and pray this was edifying. Till next time, Shalom.